Howdy y'all. Alright, so today we're going to be calling out a few false teachers and some of the absolute heresy that they teach. And this heresy is this thing that people want to cling to that, that, that for some reason they... I, I, I have no idea why. I know I almost fell for it myself. But they want to say that demons can hold sway over God's elect. They want to say that you can give them legal rights through means of unconfessed sin or witchcraft through the TV and all other kinds of mystical garbage. It's, it's, it's garbage. It really is, y'all. Um, but we're going to go straight to Scripture to disprove this. We're going to go follow Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 4, <laughs> verses 1 through 11. Then was, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for forty days, he was afterwards and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made to bread. But he answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So again the devil taketh him up into, the, into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou, shalt thou serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So, let me explain a little bit before we dive back into that bit of scripture. Heretics like Derek Prince and Charles Craft and just about any deliverance, not any, all deliverance preachers that you can think of. They're, they're heretics. They claim that you give demons right to oppress you in legal grounds through uh, unconfessed sin. Well, for starters, it's laughable because every single man and woman on this earth has unconfessed sin. We fall so short of the glory of God in so many ways that we are not capable of confessing all the ways that we sin against Him because we simply don't know. We are not capable of understanding how pure and righteous God is because we are nowhere near that level. So, if that is the case, then demons are possessing every single person on this earth, which is also not true. Um, but at any rate, uh, no, wrong page, y'all. My bad. So, by going to that scripture and looking at that, they would call, if I went to Derek Prince, if he was alive, and I went to him, and said, man, these past, I don't know, about 40 days, the devil's been really, really tempting me. He'd be like, no, he has been oppressing you. What unconfessed sins do you have? Well, guess what? I would be speaking of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the only man to have ever walked the face of this earth without sin. He was not corrupted throughout his entire life, even a tiny bit by this wicked world. He led a 100% sin-free life. So, unconfessed sin is obviously not the reason that Satan tempted him. Okay? Um, and that's tempting, not oppressing, even though they would say it's oppressing. Um, to think this is literal heresy that denies the sovereignty of God. It denies the Trinity and it completely negates the penal substitutionary atonement. So, while yes, demons can tempt you and whisper to you, 
They hold no sway over you. They cannot oppress you. They cannot possess you. All you have to do is resist. That's it. Plain and simple. Um, we can further prove this by uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1-4. through 4. John says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, where you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, guys? There is no room for a demonic presence within you. God is greater than everything. The, the devil and God aren't on the same playing field. There is, there is no playing field. Satan is a creation of God. God is up here. Satan cannot hope to hold the same power of God. It's not a fair fight. God wins. God dwells within us through the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's a triune thing. Trinity. I, not a teaching for right at the moment. Um, but to say that through unconfessed sin or whatever they want to say, that a demon could take hold of me and steal me away from God's love and Jesus is to deny scripture. Scripture, sorry, it's impossible. Um, if you look in uh, John chapter ten, verses twenty-seven through thirty, Jesus says, "My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand." My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. You see, this is this teaching is absolutely meant to call out heresy, but I hope that it gives y'all some modicum of peace knowing that nothing can separate you from Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate you from God, because God chose you before the very foundation of the world. And nothing can take you from him. Um, as long as God has started a good work in you, and you feel the filial fear of God, then you know you're elect. And he will finish that work. Uh, God chose us before the foundation of the world through no meritocracy, through no foreknowledge that we would eventually choose him. No, God chose a few out of the entire human race. And by a few, I, I got no clue. I mean, the human race is this big. It could be a, that, about that big or it could be about that big of a portion. I don't know. That's not for me to know. Um, but what I do know is that every single one of us deserves hellfire and damnation. We deserve the wrath of God to be poured out upon us. Because we fall so short of his glory. But through his glory, he took a portion of us and set us aside and saved us. And nothing can stop that. That's why this notion of demons having some sort of legal ground is so just, it, it's, it's laughable. It's, it's just... Whenever you truly sit down and study scripture anyway. I've got one final nail to put in the coffin of demons holding any power over the elect. And that's uh, Romans chapter 8 verse uh, 31 through 39. Paul says, What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 
Who shall lay anything against the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns if it is Christ that died? Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are the elect of God and nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's it. Plain and simple. God's word. Derek Prince and the others... You know, I normally don't say this, but if they don't stop their false teaching, they're going to hell. That's flat out plain and simple. They are antichrist in every sense of the word. Teaching heresy all to sell books and DVDs and deceive people. It is... I don't even have a word for what it is. Demons hold no sway over my household, nor any of yours, because just as Joshua said in chapter 24, verse 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, that pretty well solves that question, right? But a lot of you are probably asking, well, do demons exist? And, you know, what about all the people that Jesus and Paul and the other apostles cast demons out of? Were they not elect also? And some of the more studied of you will even bring up Mary Magdalene, whom we know for certain was one of the elect, um, and how Jesus himself cast out seven demons from her. The simple answer to this is God's election had not manifested itself yet. God chooses us from the before the foundation of the earth, okay? The election, there is no telling. We have no knowledge of when the election actually manifests within us. I mean, none. I can't say for certain, but I'm... I mean, most people aren't... The election isn't manifested at birth, okay? Most of the time. Not to say it never happens, because I simply don't know. Uh, Charles Spurgeon had a really good quote, but guess what? I can't find it. I found it like three days ago, and I cannot find it. So we're going to go to the Westminster uh, Confession that says, God did from all eternity decree to justify all the elect, and Christ died, did in the fullness of time die for their sins and rise again for their justification. Nevertheless, they are not justified until the Holy Spirit doth in due time actually apply Christ unto them. God draws us all near in different ways. While some may be blessed with a, with a life of wealth so that they can help others, you know, maybe fund different ministries and whatnot like that, others are blessed through battles. They have been through it, and they came out with skills, and they're able to help others with those skills, be it meth addiction. Um, the LGBTQ thing, homosexuality. Maybe they were there, and then maybe they, maybe God called them from it, and now they help others turn from it. Um, the one that I really like the example of is, uh, and I'm sure a lot of y'all might not like this guy because of his, some of his preaching. I, honestly, I don't know much about the preaching, but I know his life was amazing. Uh, don't even know the name of it, but it's a movie called Machine Gun Preacher. This dude was some of, some of the worst of the worst. Like, dope kingpin deluxe. Like, kill you as soon as look at you. And God elected him and turned him around 
and he started missions missionaries and over in Africa and started building building orphanages and literally fought with guns to protect these children so just as Mary Magdalene was possessed by seven demons it teaches us things every single thing is meant to bring glory to God so that might not be the answer you want like but at the end of the day it does I mean just as I said about my grandkids I think there's several reasons for them dying the death that they did I think for one it was sparing them of this wicked world for two I think that uh, it was meant as a means to draw me closer to Christ and help me to learn more about him so that I can spread the word and draw my stepchildren closer to Christ and others as well so quit falling for the heresy quit giving it undue credence and I'm talking any heresy this yes but any other heresy look it up test the spirits to see if they be from God study your Bible if it is not biblical then it's untrue and it is taught by a false teacher and antichrist in every sense of the word so we got a little bit deep in this one <laughs> I love all y'all and I hope y'all have a blessed rest of your Sunday um, and a blessed work week to come y'all have a good one